Christmas is almost here. It's so close. So spend a week with me decorating, getting ready for Christmas season, and trying out some brand new recipes. Today I'm going to start by making three new sourdough cookie recipes. I have made sourdough cookies before and it's kind of something I've mastered because I love cookies. I've got kids. Kids love cookies. Everyone loves cookies. But the first few times I tried to make sourdough cookies, they were very cakey and not chewy and gooey. Just they didn't have the texture I liked. So I had to play with it a little bit. Finally got it figured out. I've got my classic favorite cookie recipe, uh, sourdough cookie recipe that's just chocolate chip sourdough cookies. That's been on my blog for a while, but I've got, like I said, I'm trialing three new ones today, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. Two of them were fabulous, and they were keepers, and they are on my blog now for you. <laughs> One of them was not, not a keeper. So I'll walk you through my process. So since it's baking day, I went ahead and just filled my canisters with flour, sugar, got everything ready. I've had my butter sitting out on the counter, um, but I'm going to go ahead and brown this butter because that's one of the secrets to making sourdough cookies. When you are using sourdough starter, it is essentially half flour and half water. Well, if you've made cookies from scratch, you know that cookies don't have water as one of the ingredients ever, or milk, or any straight liquid component. So when you're adding that sourdough starter in, you're adding liquid in. And you need to make up for that liquid content. And one way you do that is by browning the butter, which causes some of the milk solids to, to solidify. And then another way you do that is what I'm doing right now. Use egg yolks only. So I am making, like I said, three, I'm trialing three new recipes so I'm browning the butter for all three of them at once that's why there was so much butter and I'm separating all the egg yolks at once you've got to really know what you're doing to keep all this straight I guess but I'm used to doing this I do this all the time I love experimenting in the kitchen making up recipes and as you'll see today they don't always turn out but that's okay. That's how I have found my favorite ones is just trial and error. So when you're browning butter, less is more. Go slow. <laughs> don't turn it all the way up to high because you don't want to burn your butter and waste it. That's no good. So I've got my butter over there just simmering on low. I separated my egg yolks. Now I am zesting a lemon because one of the recipes I'm making sourdough lemon drop cookies and these well I guess I'll just go ahead and spoil it for you <laughs> these were one of the keepers these were so good I've got one child that you know lemon drop cookies that is his favorite that's what he always requests so I thought okay it's time to come up with a sourdough version plus I know you guys just love sourdough so I thought this would be a good one to share so these cookies are going to be very lemony. I'm using the juice from one whole lemon, the zest from one whole lemon. I'm just kind of doing some prep work while my butter is browning. So the first thing you want to do when making cookies with browned butter is you, you need to make sure your butter is cooled a little bit. And you definitely don't want hot butter to come into contact with eggs or egg yolks because you'll end up with scrambled eggs in your cookie dough. You don't want that. So <laughs> I did set my brown butter aside. It's cooled a little bit. It's still pretty hot. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix it in with the sugars first. That way my eggs won't scramble because when I add my eggs in, the butter will be mixed in with the sugars. So I'm making two, the first two recipes right now. And these ended up being the two keepers. In the big bowl is the lemon drop, sourdough lemon drop cookies. And in the small bowl that I'm mixing right now, 
These are sourdough iced oatmeal cookies. You know, like the old fashioned iced oatmeal cookies. Mm, so good. Sorry if you don't like oatmeal, but I do. So um, they were, these were definitely end up being a keeper. You'll see at the end. Now, um, in the lemon drop cookies, those I want to be light in color. So I, I just use white sugar, no brown sugar, but the oatmeal, brown sugar is really good in oatmeal cookies. So uh, the oatmeal cookies have a mix of white sugar and brown sugar. And as always, the exact measurements will be in the description and full instructions are linked in the blog posts. So now I've got my uh, browned butter, my sugars, and my eggs all mixed together, just adding in the rest of the ingredients. Um, the same ingredients really to start out for both of these cookie doughs, just different proportions, different amounts of vanilla, baking soda, baking powder, salt. Now the oatmeal cookies will get uh, quite a bit of cinnamon too. And as I'm watching this, watching myself dip my little half teaspoon in here like four times, I'm reminded I need to order a new set of these um, oh, measuring spoons, teaspoons, tablespoons, because I lost my one teaspoon. It's these little copper ones I always use and I love them. I've had them for years. Um, and not to say I started the trend, but I had them before anyone else had them. Now everyone has them. That's okay. <laughs> But I lost my one teaspoon, so I have to use my half teaspoon for everything. I need to order a new set. I guess I don't need to. That's not a need, but I do enough baking and cooking I can justify it, right? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add my sourdough starter in. Um, I'm not worried about the temperature of the dough because these are discard recipes. I'm not using using this starter to leaven cookie dough and get a rise out of cookie dough that's not the goal here um, each now even though I said these are discard recipes but you can see in this video that this is clearly active starter active starter works that's fine I'm still not going to be leavening this dough I'm not going to be letting it rise but you can use active starter um, I'll explain as we go. So each one of these doughs use th uses three quarters cup of sourdough starter. That's a lot. So if you have starter to use up, making cookies is a great way to do it. You saw I went ahead and added my lemon juice and lemon zest into my lemon cookie dough. Now I'm coming over here and getting my oats. So the oatmeal cookies use two cups of oats. Now you want these oats rough chopped. But doing that with a knife would be just like a disaster. So I'm going to use my Vitamix. You can use a food processor too. But do not, do not over pulse, over mix. Just pulse a couple of times. Because like I said, you want them chopped. You do not want oat flour. So I'm adding my oats into my cookie dough now. I'm going to add my flour into each. Um, but back to the oats. If you over process your oats and they end up like powdery, like oat flour, you're essentially just increasing the amount of flour in the recipe and you're going to end up with hard, dry oatmeal cookies that just are not that great. So don't do it. Don't overmix. All right, let's get out to the add-ins here. So for the lemon cookies, I'm adding in white chocolate chips and cinnamon chips for the oatmeal cookies. Now, you don't have to add the white chocolate chips into the lemon but I really, really liked it with them. But you can leave them out, that's fine. And then the cinnamon chips, that's also optional. I mean, you get creative if you want. You can do raisins instead. You don't have to do anything. You can just do straight up oatmeal cookies and kind of get creative with the spices there, add a little nutmeg or whatever you want to do. But these cinnamon chips were just so good. They really were the perfect addition to the oatmeal cookies. So that's what I included in, in my recipe. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something that I haven't talked about up until this point because this was my massive failure. These were chocolate sourdough. Let's see, what did I? What was I going to call them? Sourdough brownie cookies. Um, and I put peppermint or put crushed up candy cane on top. I had such high hopes, but they were just terrible. And to be honest, any time that I have tried to make something very chocolatey with any sourdough starter added in. Something about the chocolate and the sourdough doesn't do it for me. I end up not liking the flavor at all. 
it ends up tasting sour. And I do not want my desserts to taste sour. Yes, I know it's sourdough starter. Okay, I've I clearly start. I've started the baking process here. <laughs> so I had my cookie doughs made. I've started the baking process. Look at these lemon drop cookies. So good. And you give them a dusting of uh, powdered sugar afterwards. So these are very similar. If you have ever been to Panera and had a Panera lemon drop cookie, very similar. They're very good. Anyway. I want my cookies to be sweet. I want my desserts to be sweet. It's supposed to be a treat. We don't eat it all the time because it's it's a treat. I don't want them to be sour. I don't want to taste sourdough starter at all. I don't mind a little depth and flavor from the starter, but I don't want to taste sourness. And when I tasted those chocolate cookies, those brownie cookies that I had such high hopes for, they were sour. So anyway, I'm just taking some pictures because of the keepers. <laughs> the keepers are going to go on the blog, so practicing my food photography here. You know, I'm, not, I'll, I'm sure I'll get better at this. It's like anything you do, you get better over time. So I just don't worry about not being good at things when I'm starting because that's normal. Like that's normal life. When you start something, you're probably not that good. And then you keep doing it and hopefully you get better. <laughs> um, so my photos are pretty plain. I don't have a lot of like props and stuff, but I'm just working on getting good, clear photos for my blog and, and that's okay. So we're going to move on and bake the oatmeal cookies. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, something I thought of that would be really good on the lemon drop cookies would be the glaze that I'm actually going to put on the oatmeal cookies. It, like that same glaze, but maybe add a little lemon extract or a little lemon zest. So it'd be like a lemon glaze. You'll see what I mean when I glaze these, but that would be really good too. So I actually put that as an option in the blog post. I, I always like my blog post, I try to give ideas and stuff if you want to mix it up. So look at these oatmeal cookies. Both of these recipes, the cookies turned out just very, exactly what you would expect from a cookie. Just gooey and moist and chewy, you know, melts in your mouth, not cakey, not fluffy. Now I'm sorry if you like cakey cookies. Now you're offended. I did not mean to offend you. That is okay. If you like cakey cookies, Make these recipes, but leave in the egg yolks and don't brown the butter and you'll get a cakier cookie. Okay, now I'm going to make the glaze for the oatmeal cookies. Very simple. It's just a one-to-one -one ratio. So one cup of powdered sugar to one tablespoon of milk. You can put some vanilla in if you like. So I, I did two cups of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of milk, and then just dip you, the top of your cookies into the glaze, into the icing use a fork to help you lift them out. I, the first one I actually broke, <laughs> so I ate it, which was delicious. I wasn't too disappointed about that. Um, and it was for the baby. It wasn't for me. So I tried to salvage these, um, brownie cookies by adding some glaze on top. And then I just didn't tell my family how bad they were. And I thought, okay, I'll just plate them up and see. And yeah, they were, it, it just didn't work. Um, it didn't work. They were still bad. <laughs> they looked good though. Okay, well that's it. So those recipes are in the description. And they're on my blog for you. Now you have some last minute sourdough cookie, Christmas cookie recipes. Um, I'm filming this a little bit in advance. So we haven't had our big Christmas cookie baking day. I don't know if I'll film that because it's something I do, you know, with my daughter, with my family but I will make lots of uh, different kinds of cookies on that day and probably try out some new recipes too. So we're gonna move right along and start decorating, getting ready for Christmas season. Uh, decorating for me isn't necessarily like a checklist thing, like, oh, we gotta get it done. It's more of just, you know, throughout December, as December rolls on, we start getting out the decorations. And yes, that is a fake tree. Yes, I live on a farm, and uh, a very large farm, and I have a fake tree. It is what it is. We did a real tree for a few years, and one year... Okay, so one of my favorite days of the year to shop is actually the day after Christmas. The deals are so much better than Black Friday. They're amazing, especially if you want to get Christmas decor. So this tree, I... For the life of me, I can't remember where I got it, which drives me nuts because I love it so much. Um, just lightly flocked. It's got pretty pine cones in it. 
I can't remember where I got it, but I do remember it was just ridiculously cheap. So I grabbed it and it's so easy to put up. Like you saw, it's like three pieces. So this is what it is now. We have a fake tree that I like a lot. We love Christmas time for the obvious reason that it is the celebration of the incarnation of Jesus. And you know, I know people have all kinds of theories about pagan this and pagan that, but I would just say read history, read more history than, you know, like Wikipedia pagan stuff. Um, we've got such a rich amount of church history that goes back 2,000 years and it's the same, you know, you can see it affirmed over and over again. So we love celebrating any, any holiday celebrates Jesus. Okay. These are little ornaments that I thought were super cute. They, um, are just different saints, old Testament saints. And I found them at the thrift shop actually. So I'm letting my kids help me here because this is such a special time of year for our kids and this is their home too. It's not just my home. And I like it. I love seeing their little touches that they put on everything. Um, I'm not very particular. I don't rearrange, you know, the tree after they put ornaments on. I just let them help. All right, we're going to move it right along. That was all we got to the first day. Just kind of stockings, putting the tree up, lights, ornaments. Now, you know, I've got some Christmas pillows and other Christmassy stuff for the living room, but I figured I should probably clean my furniture since I'm switching pillows out. And wow. Okay. Look at this cushion. I just cleaned it compared to these. Ooh, it really needed it. This is something that should really be done like once a year probably, but it has not been done once a year. And look at this, this thing here is a beast. So look at the clear side. That's the side that the water you know, came out from. And then this is what it sucked back up. Just disgusting. That's, that's really neat that that's what we were sitting on. But anyway, and the couch is clean. Got that task done now. Um, moving it right along to the next day. I'll put my Christmas pillows out since my furniture is now nice and clean. And once again, you know, if you are hoping for like pretty sleek, aesthetic Christmas in this farmhouse and on this homestead, that's not it. And that's okay if that's what you like. I like it. I appreciate all different kinds of decor. But um, it's more grandma style around here. I just want my house to be decorated in a way that my kids will think is magical. Like that's what's important to me is making memories for my kids. Oh, and I just put a little baby stocking up there. That's what you see me doing. So a little baby stocking on my stocking and, um, cat, which that's officially her name. It's, it's just kitty or cat because we waited too long to name her and that's what she comes to now. So, um, yeah, cat is here to stay. She's, she's enjoying Christmas. Very cozy. She says, but anyway, when I'm decorating my house, I just think about, you know, what, what would be magical for my kids? What do they like? And I let them help pick a lot of stuff out. A lot of our, you know, decorations and stuff. It's stuff they have picked out. You can see I have a lot of their ornaments. Actually, all. Almost all of their ornaments on the tree. Some ornaments from when I was a kid, from when John was a kid. But, you know, no themed tree decor. No, like, new ornaments every year. It's just... Uh, Lots of stuff that is sentimental to us, and and that's what I like. So I've got lots of little hand prints here, all things that I will continue to cherish in years to come, I am sure. So it is still Advent. I know we're getting close, but it's technically still Advent. So I've got my Advent wreath out, and yes, I know I only have three candles. That's because I made this myself. I didn't buy an Advent wreath. I just used a wreath and I used a candle holder that I had and only had room for three. So that's okay. Cause we all know in this family that there are, you know, four Sundays that we count down. So I'm going to put a few little Christmas touches in the kitchen. Nothing too crazy. I've just got some more thrift finds that I picked up. That's another thing. Like a lot of stuff you see, it is Christmassy in my house. 
I would say well over 75% of stuff came from thrift shops. These little um, houses and churches that I'm setting up now, thrift shops. And a lot of the other stuff came from my mom that she, she gave me when I started having kids because it was stuff that we had in our house <laughs> is decorations, you know, when I was growing up and stuff that I loved. So I bought some new things, but lots of it is, uh, we will just say, well loved. So very simple in the kitchen here. Now, I am not a very crafty person, but I did go to a fabric store and I saw these little cute little wreaths that were on clearance for very cheap. So I grabbed all of them that they had left <laughs> and some cheap little bows and some cheap ribbon and thought I would make a little DIY project because I looked up like these little Christmas hanging wreaths and they're very expensive, um, like maybe 20 bucks a piece. It's, it's crazy. So the wreaths I got for three or four dollars a piece, they're uh, bows. I think a pack of 12 was just a couple bucks and then the ribbon was like a couple dollars. So I didn't spend that. <laughs> Definitely didn't spend that. So we'll see how these, how these turn out. YouTube and blogging and you know just in the world right now because a lot of people like to decorate for Christmas um you know in November sometime but actually you're watching this I believe on December 20th and tomorrow is the first day of winter so it's not even winter yet tomorrow it will be but technically still fall and it is still Advent as well. So still a season of preparation and waiting for the birth of our Lord to celebrate that glorious occasion. So I am getting my fall porch decor put away. And it is time to put out the Christmas season decor. So... In on the liturgical calendar, Christmas isn't just a day, it's actually a whole season. It's called Christmas Tide, and it doesn't begin until Christmas Day. So the liturgical year begins with Advent, meaning we are in the beginning of a new church year. And Christmas Tide begins on Christmas Day. And it is, I believe, 40 days long, but there are 12 days of like the solemn celebration where you're feasting and really celebrating Christmas. So we're almost there. What you just saw me do was um, those were some clearance, like very simple minimalist wreaths that I had gotten maybe last year. Not my style, but with some more cheap bows, I was able to fancy them up a little bit and make them not so plain. So here I've got more uh, grandma core Christmas pillows and oh my gosh what you see me holding these are little frogs Mr. and Mrs. Claus frogs uh, that sing and dance and they're hilarious and we had them when I was a kid. They came from my mom and dad from our house and my mom always went all out for Christmas. At least I think she did. Um, lots of really cool decorations and I just loved it. I loved our house at Christmas time and my mom still does actually and my sister does as well and yeah so 
the Christmas frogs live on because my kids love them. They think they're hilarious. They love pushing the button and making the Christmas frogs sing and dance. All right, got lots of pillows here. You know, I know there are jokes about like women and throw pillows. So I'm not helping that stereotype out right now kind of just fulfilling it, but you know, what do you do? I tried to throw out the idea of cutting down some real trees and putting them up on the porch this year, but John did not seem thrilled by that. Um, sometimes when I have an idea that he doesn't like, he acts like he doesn't hear me. And then I understand that that means that that's a no. He's not interested in assisting with that idea and that's just how we do things because ladies have a lot of ideas like we need to be able to recognize this about ourselves my sister and I laugh about this all the time like ladies are just full of ideas and half of them if we thought on them for two seconds we wouldn't even want to do them so you know sometimes the guys just need to rein it in but you know maybe in the future we will do the real trees on the porch and just continue being a little more extra at Christmas time every year. So I've got some fake uh, floral arrangements here. Just going to set these out to give my dancing Christmas frogs a pretty place to prop themselves up against. And I'm done. I'm finished with the porch. It is nice and Christmassy. Now the only thing we are missing is snow. But I'm not getting my hopes up because it has been a couple of years since we've had a really good snow here on the farm. And we're in Missouri. I mean, we're in the Midwest. We usually do get a couple of good snows in the wintertime, but it just hasn't been happening for us the last couple of years. So like I said, not getting my hopes up for a white Christmas, but that's okay. All right, on to the very last item on my Christmas decor checklist. So first of all, this space, this wall behind me that you see, that is not a window there. It's just like a old window that's hanging on the wall that somebody gave me that actually, and I just hung it there. But when we built the house, built-ins were supposed to go there, like beautiful, um, stained wooden built-ins and we actually just had to let our woodworker go because <laughs> uh, things just weren't going well and it's never gotten done it's been years and it's just never gotten done that wall is just there and I, I just uh, it drives me nuts actually because I really could use that space and I know exactly what I want there we just haven't done it yet anyway so since I've got this huge space for now, this is where we put our nativity every year and our Christmas village. Now, what you see me doing here is actually opening a new nativity set. The one that we've had, I actually, it was ours when I was growing up. So <laughs> it was in really bad shape. Like there were several missing arms and legs. Um, angel had missing wings. It, it wasn't good. So it was time to replace it. Anyway, so from this very challenging, difficult work of the day, I had to make myself an afternoon coffee. So I've got my new uh, Wiseman and my new Joseph and Mary, the new Holy Family all set up. And my kids were all making mug cookies. It sounded really good, so I made one too. And I just used cookie dough. So I had some leftover sourdough chocolate chip cookie dough in the fridge. And, you know, you can make um, mug cookies with regular cookie dough. You don't need to do like a special recipe. It still works pretty well, as you saw. So the baby heard that, you know, cookies were happening and made his way right on in. I did end up getting one bite but he was not happy. He ate the rest. So I had to settle for my coffee. So just continuing to 
work on little Christmas details in the kitchen as we're putting up the nativity and the Christmas village. This is my kids' favorite thing. I would say if I had to pick one thing that they love the absolute most, it is this. It is just magical for them. So this is something that, you know, even when I get my pretty built-ins put in here, we will still have to find a place for the big Christmas village every year. All right, well, that is it for this week's video. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas celebrating the Incarnation, and I will see you next week.